recognize Senator Gillibrand via WebEx. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Admiral, the Department of Defense has recently outlined China's military strategy known as military civil fusion, AKA civil military integration to develop the PLA into a world-class military by 2049. The 2019 DOD report on China stated that, quote, China uses a variety of methods to acquire foreign military and dual use technologies, including targeted foreign direct investment, cyber theft, and dual use technology, excuse me, uh, an exploitation of private Chinese nationals access to these technologies as well as harnessing its intelligence services, computer intrusions, and other illicit approaches. Because these efforts by China will certainly affect business um, and people across the region, what would you recommend we work with with our allies to counter this strategy while maintaining the principles of a free and open Indo-Pacific? Thank you for your uh, question, Senator. Um, To your point, the, the Chinese military civil fusion approach, um, which is underpinned by Chinese law that says any state or commercial business enterprise with concerns in uh, China are must uh, provide um, any information that the state seeks um, for its benefit. Um, that's made for uh, particularly, you know, complex global engagement and global economic um, scenario, I think, um, for not only the United States, but as you, as you said, our allies and partners. It's been right. very important that, you know, laws like FIRMA, the CFIUS process that has been established in the United States is meant to help um, <laughs> deny um, that, that fusion uh, within uh, China. Um, I know that many of our allies and partners in the region have begun to pass laws in that direction and are debating Uh them as well. Well, related, um, in last year's NDAA, we included language requiring the DOD to look into better cooperation with our allies in in the Pacific. Specifically, we recognized our cooperation is to, quote, enhance through more proactive planning and cooperation with allies and partners that capitalize on each country's comparative strengths. The study requires determining what comparative advantages our allies have and the barriers that exist to fully realize them. So what barriers do you face in working with our allies and what can Congress do to facilitate these relationships? Well, one, you know, there has to be uh, not just an explanation from the security side, but on the economic side as well, um, you know, complete clarity in in what um, China's military civil fusion um, threat does um, to, you know, partnered um, multinational uh, companies and things like that that might have um, a presence or subsidiaries in China. Um, so I think there needs to be, you know, clear dialogue about that. Transparency in the kind of laws we've passed and the rationale uh, for them, like CFIUS and, and FIRMA. Um, and we need to drive um, understanding with our allies and partners that this threat is real and that if we don't see change uh, from our allies and partners, that we may have to um, um, uh, determine whether many of our technologies can be shared with them to to prevent their just outright conveyance to China alone. Thank you. Um, I also wanna um, continue with some of the line of questioning from Senator Shaheen. As new technologies have been developed rapidly and non-traditional threats such as COVID and climate change begin to bear greater relevance, it's been crucial that we are able to work in a proactive manner to coordinate and respond with our allies. What lessons would you say the COVID-19 pandemic has taught Indo-PACOM about coordinating with allies in the face of emerging non-traditional and transnational threats? Further. Do we balance our approach, or how do we balance our approach to these particular threats in contrast to the traditional ones that we face in the Indo-Pacific? Um, thank you, Senator. It's, uh, I absolutely agree. There's opportunity for deepened uh, relationships with our allies and partners on transnational issues. And this is a whole of government opportunity for us um, because, you know, there, there's economic components of the government, law enforcement, 
health and human services, um, et cetera, um, when combined with some of the capabilities we can bring to deliver um, uh, add capacity in, in, in diagnosing and uh, delivering vaccines, for example, um, collaborating with our allies and partners in the region for those nations in need is hugely powerful. And I, I think there should be deepened relationships across the whole U.S. government um, with their counterparts in these other countries. Um, I'm finding just, uh, you know, in the transnational threat uh, alone that some nations have um, legal means and relationships with countries that um, would be incredibly effective to help undermine uh, things like uh, Chinese corruption on, on uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, for example. Um, so deepening partnerships there with our allies and partners across of our whole of government, I think is a key part of the competition that we're all talking about. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Gillibrand. Senator Cotton, please. Admiral 